If you enjoy my content and would like to become an ST66 supporter, I will leave links in the comment section and it will be greatly appreciated. Why you should stack silver and not gold Properly called the United States Bullion Depository, the infamous Fort Knox Depository was created as a result of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's 1933 Executive Order 6102, when the government needed gold so that they could print more money. You see, back then, the 1913 Federal Reserve Act required that there had to be a minimum of 40% gold held for all cash in circulation. Their theory was increasing the money supply would help end the slumping economy that resulted from the Great Depression. Citizens were forced by penalty of law to turn over all their gold coins and bullion by May 1, 1933 for the value of $20.76 per ounce. And when all this gold came in, the government realized it didn't have adequate security storage space for it. Thus, the gold depository at Fort Knox was born. And they were concerned about our gold reserves, which were kept at New York and Philadelphia, being attacked. So they decided to construct the gold vault at Fort Knox because it was a thousand miles inland from the eastern coast. It was west of the Appalachian Mountains, which at that time was a reasonable barrier. And also it was the home of the new armored force for the United States Army. So they decided that would help protect it. The, uh, Gold Vault itself is a two-story building with a one-story basement and is built primarily from poured concrete and steel. There is some granite that was used in the outer plating and so forth. It's really a unique structure. Its construction required 4,200 cubic yards of concrete. 16,500 cubic feet of granite and 1,420 tons of steel. Work on the depository was finished by 1936 and it opened its vault doors the next year. There has long been skepticism about whether or not the United States deep storage of gold reserves are actually held within the vault walls of the U.S. Bullion Depository at Fort Knox, Kentucky. As a soldier, I was actually stationed at Fort Knox and drove by the depository twice a day for three years going to and from work. I can say that it is a very awe-inspiring sight. But with all that aside, I wanted to know if all the gold reserves that the government say are stored in there are actually there. And so my research began, and it's that research that I'd like to share with you now. I'll start by saying there was a lot for me that just didn't add up. So, I'll lay out the research, and you be the judge for yourself. Here we go. According to the United States Treasury, they currently have 261 million ounces, or a little over 8,100 tons of official gold reserves, and they say, as far as they're concerned, it is fully audited and accounted for. Now the U.S. Treasury keeps a deep storage in three locations, the Denver, Colorado and West Point, New York depositories and the U.S. Bullion Depository at Fort Knox, Kentucky. According to the U.S. Department of Treasury Fiscal Service, Fort Knox currently contains 147,341,858 fine troy ounces of deep storage reserve gold. That's 4,582 metric tons or 368,354 400 ounce bars. So let's take a look at the government's accountability of this 4,500 tons of gold bars at Fort Knox. All the gold confiscated from the American citizens in 1933 was held in the Philadelphia and New York assay offices. It was this gold that was to be the first to find its home at Fort Knox. It took over 500 train cars and an armed army escort to get it there. But it wasn't until Dwight D. Eisenhower became president in January of 1953 that the first complete audit was ordered. On the campaign trail, even back then, the citizens wanted to know if the gold the government made them turn in was still there. There were rumors and reports that the gold was being bled from Fort Knox to help pay the bills of World War II and the Korean War. 
and as the nation was still on the gold standard at the time, it seemed like a reasonable request. So, the new president ordered an audit within hours of taking public office. The special settlement committee at the Fort Knox Depository only opened three gold compartments, or what amounted to 13.6% of the total 22 sealed compartments. Only 88,000 bars were counted, and only 9,000 of those bars were weighed to validate the authenticity of their density. And from these, only 26 bars were selected to be assay tested, where they drilled holes in both the top and bottom to obtain the samples for content and purity analysis. So in actuality, in 1953, when every publication and government source states that this was the last full and complete audit of the Fort Knox Depository Deep Storage Reserves, the reality, according to their own documentation, is only 26 out of 891,672 gold bars at the Fort Knox vault were definitively verified as authentic. All the other bars were validated by turning on a light switch on the outside which illuminates the container and looking through a small window in each door. This is how our government has validated 99% of the nation's gold reserve holdings. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't consider that a full audit. Not by a long shot. But it was this audit that seemed to satisfy everyone for the time being. That was until around the early 1970s. With the national debt piling up from the Vietnam War and the massive welfare program of Lyndon Johnson's Great Society, accompanied with rapidly raising oil prices in the early 1970s, put Americans on edge once again. In 1974, due to congressional interest, a commission led by the Government Accounting Office physically inventoried, weighed, and assayed 31.1 million ounces, or 967 tons, of the gold at the Mint's largest storage facility, Fort Knox. At the start of the audit process on September 23, 1974, roughly 100 journalists, TV cameras, and nine members of Congress were allowed entrance into Fort Knox to visit a single container, which just so happened to be number 33. Isn't that convenient? For only two hours, they were able to inspect the 36,236 400-ounce gold bars secured inside. Not a single person who visited this one compartment of gold had any clue what they were looking at, and yet they seemed to be more than content that it represented the entire bullion depository. How can people be so naive? I believe the contents of this particular container consisted of the melted down 22 karat gold coins that were confiscated from the American citizens in 1933. You can clearly see an orange tint to the gold bars in the video. This is a result of copper that was used in the production of gold coinage at the time. The copper made the gold coins more durable, because we have to remember that back prior to 1933, people were still paying for goods and services with their legal tender gold coins. So after this media dog and pony show ended, the real auditing work was supposed to begin. In 1975, the U.S. Treasury agreed to a recommendation by the Government Accountability Office on a periodic cyclical inventory to ensure that about 10% of the gold was physically inspected annually, eventually to have audited all of the gold for which the United States government is accountable by 1984. Every compartment physically verified was placed under official joint seal so to avoid the necessity of verifying all assets in each audit. These actions, having once been performed in accordance with the established procedures, will not have to be repeated as long as the assets remain under an unimpaired joint seal. So basically it took between 1974 and 1986 and between 1993 until 2008 for the Treasury to complete what they claim is a 100% audit of the U.S. gold cold storage reserves, with each compartment during this time only being audited once unless it was opened for some other reason. 
So the next question I asked myself, based on the actual amount of gold bars that were truly verified through assay testing in 1953, which was 26 bars of selected inventory, what percentage of total gold bars have been assay tested in the course of their 100% validation and accountability of the nation's gold reserves? Here's what I discovered. During the continuing audits from 1974 through 1986, it seems 2% of the gold counted was weighed, and by 1998, the sample size was further reduced to 0.53%. In 2000, the sample size was increased to 0.65%, representing only 93 bars being weighed, and in 2004, only 71 bars were weighed and assay tested. So on average, based on the audit documents that were available to the public, less than 1% of all gold bars in Fort Knox have actually been assay tested to truly verify that they are of actual gold content and possess the appropriate purity. Now let's take a look at the assay data from this 1% sampling. In 1953, 26 bars were sampled with no irregularities reported. However, there was no assay report included in the audit report. In 1977, one bar in every 50th melt, which is one melt is approximately 20 bars, was assayed. Two of the smelts were reported with irregularities. The details of the irregularities are unknown, and the assayer is unknown, and there was no assay report included in the audit report. For all public available audit reports, 1980, 81, 85, and 86, it very briefly mentioned assay tests were conducted, presumably for one in every 50th melt. No irregularities were found. The assayer is unknown, and no assay reports have been included in the audit reports. For the audits performed in 1975, 76, 78, 79, 82, and 83, and 84, under the continuing audits program, allegedly one in 50 melts has been assayed, although there are no audit reports, no assay reports, and we don't know who the assayer was. My interpretation of this data is that of the meager 1% gold bars actually reported as assayed by the government for which there are no assay reports available for the public, I consider this to be a 0% verification of the composition and purity of the claimed 368,554 gold bars the government says are kept at the Fort Knox Depository. Furthermore, according to information provided from the U.S. National Archives under the Freedom of Information Act requested by Coos Johnson, it appears that the U.S. Treasury has lost 7 out of the 12 audit reports ever conducted on the U.S. gold reserves held at Fort Knox. That seems utterly incomprehensible for a government to just lose seven years of audits for the accountability of over $10 billion worth of national gold assets. That kind of government incompetence and dereliction should have everyone involved behind bars. I'm sorry, but you don't just misplace something as important as a bullion depository audit. Something is definitely not right here. The missing audits are the following. 1975 76, 78, 79, 82, 83, and 84. Now let's take a look at the joint seal system the depository uses so they don't have to reinspect every container every year. From the Bureau of the Mint Department of the Treasury. Purpose of the Joint Seals. The purpose of the joint seal is to avoid the necessity of verifying all assets in each annual or special settlement audit that the tremendous quantities of the bullion and coin in the mint institutions make it impossible for practical reasons to weigh, count, assay, and check all values on the occasion of each settlement. These actions, having once been performed by an authorized committee in accordance with the established procedures, will not have to be repeated as long as the assets verified remain under an unimpaired joint seal. 
Thereafter, the assets under such a seal may be considered as verified and will be accepted for settlement purposes after the settlement committee has examined the seal and is satisfied that the seal has not been impaired in any manner. The problem I have with the joint seals being used as a reason not for auditing those containers which were sealed between 1974 and 2008 is that in 2010 the U.S. Mint decided to replace all of the official joint seals made of delicate ribbon and wax with a more durable plasticized seal with steel cables and have to be removed by two cuts using a strong bolt cutter. Another issue which disturbs me is that all of these seal replacements were carried out in the presence of only three officials, a Treasury OIG auditor, a Mint headquarters staff person representing the Mint director, and a Mint storage facility staff person representing the facility plant manager. Now we're talking about three people who are the only validation for the entire $12 billion of national gold reserves. What doesn't seem right about this? There are so many possibilities to this scenario that could have been played out. But let's move on. Let's consider some testimonials of eyewitnesses in the 1970s. In a 1981 newspaper article entitled 66 billion in gold missing from Fort Knox, two gentlemen, Edward Durrell and Dr. Peter Better, stated that between 1973 and 1974, millions of ounces of gold were drained out of Fort Knox by a handful of international speculators, including American bankers, with the blessing of the U.S. Treasury. Dr. Beter believes that the gold was spirited away in army trucks in the dead of night, shipped to New York City, and then flown to Switzerland and then to the Netherlands. He claims it was illegally sold to European sources for the bargain price of $42 an ounce. Victor Harkin, who was in charge of the Fort Knox Reserve until recently, admits that one shipment of gold in 1971 took 33 15-ton trucks to haul it out of there. Dr. Beter and Mr. Durrell are demanding that President Reagan order a complete audit of the gold at Fort Knox and other federal depositories around the country. They enlisted the help of 1980 presidential candidate Phil Crane, a Republican from Illinois, and former Congressman John Rarick, a Democrat from Louisiana, and Frank Shelf, a Republican from Kentucky. Mr. Durrell claims that little gold still remains in Fort Knox, only about six billion worth, and it's of inferior quality. It's mostly melted down gold coins. The quality is so poor it wouldn't be accepted by open markets by any nation. Dr. Beter says he found out about the theft in 1974 from top officials in the American and foreign governments. He brought it to the attention of a congressional committee, but officials in the Treasury Department denied that any gold had been removed from Fort Knox. However, Shelf claimed that he had an eyewitness to the midnight heists. He stated, I had people posted on lookout and they would tell me the hour and the minute when every load was taken out. The Treasury Department finally agreed to conduct an inspection of Fort Knox for a group of reporters and congressmen, but Mr. Durrell calls it a complete farce. Only two of the 13 vaults were audited, he says, and instead of sampling the bars by boring holes into them to make sure they were gold all the way through, only small chips were taken from the outside. Mr. Durrell also claims that the reporters and the congressmen were not allowed to touch the gold and were only allowed to look at it through tiny peepholes. Treasury officials later admitted that the gold they showed the group was melted down coins and that the majority of the gold in Fort Knox was of inferior quality. Okay, so here's my take on this story. There's no way of validating the credibility of this story by itself. So what I do is place it in the context of a bigger picture and ask myself the following questions. 1. Is this story even possible? Well, based on the historical lack of accountability for the bullion reserves and the corrupt nature of the very wealthy, I would have to say yes, it is possible. 2. Does the response of the government officials follow a similar reactive pattern to matters regarding discrepancies for the depository? Yes, outright denial and then, if the issue is pushed hard enough, a half-assed attempt of an investigatory process. 
the fact that the Treasury Department did relent to conduct the investigation does lead to the credibility of the story. The fact that Mr. Durrell and Dr. Beter were only trying to have an audit conducted and weren't seeking any type of personal gain attached to their claims indicates that their motives could have been pure. The government's reaction to this claim just screams cover-up to me. What do you think? Let's continue. Perhaps the reason for the lack of appropriate audits with assay testing is because the bars in the compartments of Fort Knox aren't gold at all, but made of tungsten and only thinly covered with gold. Sounds preposterous and ridiculous, right? Well, check this out. In October of 2009, China received a shipment of gold bars from the United States Department of the Treasury, which had been stored at the U.S. Bullion Depository in Fort Knox. When the shipment was received, the Chinese government ordered special tests to be performed to guarantee the purity and weight of the gold bars. The gold shipment contained a tungsten core with a thin coating of real gold. These tested gold bars originated from the U.S. and had been stored in Fort Knox for years. The gold shipment serial numbers reveal that these fake bars were made by the Federal Reserve bankers during the Clinton administration. It was during the Clinton presidency that the bankers of the Federal Reserve manufactured between 1.3 and 1.5 million 400-ounce tungsten blanks. 640,000 of these tungsten blanks were gold-plated and were shipped to Fort Knox, where they remain to this day. According to Chinese investigators, the balance of this 1.3 million to 1.5 million cachet was also gold-plated and then sold into international gold markets. Not only has the United States gold stocks been swapped with fake gold, the global markets has also been defrauded by the Federal Reserve bankers. My take on this story. One thing I can say is that this is not a conspiracy theory and can be validated by several sources. This incident with the Chinese has been well reported and documented in Europe and Asia, but hasn't even been touched by the U.S. mainstream media. There's so much more to this topic, but I need to find a stopping point, so let's close up this topic with a quick summary. The U.S. Bullion Depository was specifically created in 1936 to house the 1933 gold confiscated from American citizens so the government could print more money. There has been skepticism about the contents of the depository since 1953 and that skepticism has never been truly satisfied. It's crystal clear to me that the nation's gold reserve cold storage assets have never been properly inventoried, 100% weighed, and most importantly, 100% assayed to validate its content and purity. This is despite the fact that U.S. presidents have demanded it, Congress has demanded it, and citizens have demanded it, and yet to this day it has never been accomplished. Substantial evidence has been presented to every level of our government that there are discrepancies with the audit system. Seven missing audits. No assay reports accompanying any of the audits. All the container joint seals were upgraded in 2010, and yet those containers were never re-audited as per U.S. Mint and U.S. Treasury policy. The only visual representation of the gold in Fort Knox has the orange copper tint to it, which validates other theories that this is the only gold remaining in the vaults because it doesn't meet the purity standards for sale on the open world market. Citizens have come forward with compelling theories and evidence of the removal of gold from the depository and the government has refused to take the necessary steps to refute those accusations. And finally, a foreign nation receiving a repatriated shipment of gold bars from the United States discovered that they were not made of gold, but only gold-covered tungsten. This nation conducted an investigation and issued a statement that these tungsten bars only covered with gold were created some 15 years ago and could be tracked back to their origin by the gold shipment serial numbers. The investigation revealed that they were commissioned by the Federal Reserve bankers and that there were actually between 1.3 and 1.5 million 400-ounce tungsten blanks made. 
640,000 of these gold-plated tungsten blanks were traced to have been shipped to the Fort Knox Depository 15 years ago, where they remain to this day. According to a New York Post article titled, DA Investigating New York Mercantile Exchange Executive, this article, written by Jennifer Anderson, reported that a top executive at the New York Mercantile Exchange is being investigated by the Manhattan District Attorney. Sources close to the exchange said that Stuart Smith, Senior Vice President of Operations at the exchange, was served with a search warrant by the District Attorney's Office. The offices of the Senior Vice President of Operations for the New York Mercantile Exchange is exactly where you would go to find the records, serial numbers, and smelter of origin for every gold bar ever physically settled on the exchange. They are required to keep these records. These precise records would show the lineage of all the physical gold settled on the exchange. My thoughts. I know this was a lot to digest, but I found this topic to be very compelling. I can't deny that something doesn't seem right about this entire topic. Is there any irrefutable evidence that all the gold is gone? Well, no, not really. Is there any absolute, substantiated proof that all the gold is in the vaults at Fort Knox? Well, no, not really. Are the motives of the people to create a conspiracy about the gold not being there greater than the motives for the government to conceal the fact that it really isn't? Regardless of the cost, I feel there should be an immediate, 100% full assay test of every single gold bar in the possession of the Treasury Department. This would once and for all dispel any issues regarding the authenticity of the nation's gold bullion cold storage reserves. Additionally, all quantities of gold bars in custody of the U.S. Treasury should be clearly identified to the public if they are assets of the United States government or on lease to other governments or entities or if they are being stored by the U.S. on behalf of other nations or entities. This way we can finally know what gold belongs to who. The reason for the title on this video. I have no idea anymore what the current gold price is based on. If there are 1.5 million 400 ounce tungsten blanks covered in gold floating around the gold market, combined with the ETFs and other manipulations, I just don't know what's going to happen to the gold markets when all of this becomes public knowledge. I'm just sticking to silver until all this mess plays out. I will be closely monitoring world news and current events to see if any more indicators appear that might shed some additional light on this subject. What do you think? Do you believe that the entire 4,582 metric tons of pure gold that the government claims has been completely audited, weighed, and assayed is now sitting in Fort Knox? Or perhaps do you believe that the only gold left in Fort Knox is the 2,515 tons of dirty, smelted gold bars comprised of the 90% gold and 10% copper coins which were confiscated in 1933? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. A big thank you to all who support this channel and especially to those who take the time to like and comment. I don't monetize my channel, so all of your likes and subscriptions are greatly appreciated. If you enjoy my content and would like to become an ST66 supporter, I will leave links in the comment section and it will be greatly appreciated. If you are not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Then select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. And as always, feel free to share this content.